You're watching another edition of the Relationships Expert Show. I am your host, Asani Pettiford, and today we're talking about marriage. Now, many of you who watch this program are either single and alone, dating, in committed courtships, or possibly even engaged. And oftentimes, the topic of marriage has come up. But when we discuss this topic, we bring many of our anxieties and our fears and all types of expectations to the table and often leave the conversation more fearful and stressed than when we began. So on today's program, we did not want any self-proclaimed experts or psychologists who could offer their scholarly approach to the issue, but we wanted real life couples. So today with us, we have Lee and Carmen Rubin and Keith and Trinita Collins. Welcome to the show. <laughs> now, let's get into this topic. The, the title of the show is is marriage just for white people? Mm -hmm. It's interesting because when you look at st the statistics, when Dr. King gave his speech in 1963, 70% of all black households were ran by two parents. However, in 2009, that has declined to 48%. So over the last 30 years, we have been decimated and, and desecrated in the area of marriage more so than over the last 14 decades prior to slavery. So what has happened in the black community that has devastated our, our relationships? I think you have to look at marriage within the context of society. You know, that's, that's where it occurs. And you mentioned Dr. King. You're talking about the integration of America and, and, and black families and black individuals having access to things they never had access to. So if you're, if you're 19 and the only thing you can do at 19 is be married, that's one thing. But if now I can go and go to a university or work at a certain institution, uh, work for a certain corporation or even run my own business, I now have access to do some things that I didn't have before. So you're saying that the pursuit of success should have a negative impact on black families and relationships? I mean, do we see that in the white community? That either they have to pursue marriage and happiness or success in the world? Here's the way that I look at because of the pain that our grandmothers endured, or our grandmothers and grandfathers endured, because of that pain, that next generation of, of young people, we tried to remove them from that pain. And so what we did was we, we stopped raising our boys to be men. We also raised our daughters to be men, to mm -hmm. be the strong force, they were the rock, or they had to be men. So you, you start getting these levels of dysfunction and nobody really knows and understands their role in um, in in marriage, um, and 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 even though they were models, they weren't really great models um, because our children didn't see happiness in marriage. And that, so that, that's a good point because you know when you're thinking about young people today, there there, there are not a lot of great examples and role models right. when you're dealing with married couples. It seems that the longer couples are together, the worse things get. Right. There's a high you know rate of divorce and high rate of separation. And it's changing their attitudes and perceptions about marriage. It's interesting because I read an article a few days ago and, and I was getting the responses of single people towards marriage. This is what one of the young ladies said. She said, if Jesus Christ bought me an engagement ring, I wouldn't take it. I'd tell Jesus we could date, but we couldn't marry. Now, that's a sad scenario. Well, that's a, the first thing is, like, they have to first know how to date. Let's start from the beginning. Like if she was just gonna date Jesus Christ, what's the purpose of being with Jesus Christ, just dating? You know, you're supposed to spiritually eventually become one with this person. But That's I think the point, point that she's ultimately she making is that I'm just, I, I don't wanna be married, I have no desire to be married, there's nothing out there worth waiting for. I mean, how are we gonna teach young people, as an example, you know, preserve yourself, wait till you get married. Well, what does mar what hope is there in marriage when everything around you is devastation? There's divorce, there's separation. Even when you have two people in a household, usually they're fighting, there's a silent treatment, there's all types of issues, so there's no example we're seeing. I, I, think, I, wanna, people oh, haven't, oh. I think people at this point haven't mm -hmm. gotten married for the right reasons. Yeah. So you have people, again, going back to what he was, Ali was saying, you had no other option back in the day. So now people have options, and then, you know, they just got married just because. They didn't really know each other. So now they're arguing and they're fighting and they're not being good role models. So people see that today and it's like, why should I get into that? They're not happy anyway. But now, they didn't know each other. Now you two have been married for seven years. You have two beautiful girls. Mm -hmm. And you two have been married for 14 years with two, with two daughters as well. Yes. What has kept you this long? You know, we had a lot of calls and a lot of feedback from single people who wanted to know, you know, 
how successful can marriage actually be? Well, so what would you say? This, this? I think it go back goes back to what Keith said. He can he can piggyback off this, but we we dated. We knew each other for ten years prior to being married. We were friends before mm -hmm. there was any romantic expectations or the idea of getting married. We were, we were buddies, and we communicated some things that most people who are dating would never do. And that and I think that's the that is the start. You have to be friends first, or real friends. Like you talk you talk about anything and everything. And a lot of people, that's like the first thing that they say. Like, well, I don't want to ruin this relationship. We're friends, and we talk about. Well, that's the whole point. That's the type of person you want to be. Okay, with. but the, that's a loaded term because in today's society, when you say friends, I'm thinking friends with benefits. So my whole concept <laughs> and definition of a friend <laughs> is different well, that, than, than what it was say ten years ago. Today. People have sex today. Okay. They don't get to know each other. They don't ask the things as far as do you want to have kids? You know, what are your goals in life? Where do you see yourself, you know, in 20 years? People now, the next it's thing like, you know, okay, what position do you want to do? What, what, you know, do you want to use uh, whipped cream? Do you want to do bubble bath? And, and not, that's what you're supposed to get married off thing. of. And then mm -hmm. from there, once you're married, then you're complaining about, well, marriage sucks. Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't know the person. so why? He's not good in bed anymore. Well, you know, if that's all you did with dating, you didn't really get to know each other. Well, okay, uh, writing on that on that statement, how long ideally should a couple be together before they even consider marriage? Because some people have been, you know, dating for six months, gotten married and successful. Others been known each other for 10 years, got married, and it didn't work. So is there a formula to the success of being married? No, no. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would say the answer to that was be how, how long did it take you to be friends? You know how uh, there's there's no formula there's no there's no there equation that you can use. Well, if we've known each other this amount of time, then it's going to work. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's just a matter of do you really know each other and how well do you communicate? I will say this: if it's been two years and he hasn't asked you to marry him, move on. You're wasting your life. You should know. Two or three years. I can't stand to see people who've been together ten years and they're still trying to pull it out of the person. Well, do you want to get married or not? That's a waste of your life that you can never get back. Now, for the last 10 years since you mentioned that, I've been traveling all over the country talking to singles, talking to young people about dating, relationships, sexuality, and marriage. You're dealing with people who the longest relationship they've ever been in is three months. You know, the mm -hmm. typical dating scenario on a college campus could be a couple of weeks. And so they're wondering how in the world do you stay together for 14 years and keep the passion alive? Like, how could you stay in that type of box, if you will, for so long and maintain your sanity? Well, I think you have to open your mind up to say, you know, the passion, you, you just have to be real. The passion is not going to be there every day. I think. You know, sometimes even with with men, you know, you think that you're marrying a, the video vixen that you're watching on television. You're not marrying that. You're, you know, and then with women who are looking at men to kind of save them from all their financial troubles mm -hmm. and bring all the security. And you know, you already start the situation out with these mm -hmm. expectations that are really unrealistic. Unreal so we have to we have to go into it with the thought that the passion is not going to be there every day. I have to be honest with you and say, you know, when I look at my husband from the time that I looked at him when we started even talking as friends at 14 years old, he is not the same person that I am married to today. Now I like that, but it was also one of my requirements because I don't like to look at anything every day, all the time. I get very bored easily. So I have this man that I carefully thought about before I um, married him. I have this man that I carefully thought about, you know, even when we were dating. Is this somebody that I want to live with? Did I look at his family mm -hmm. and determine, you know, is this what I want to walk into? Did he so, look at my family? And, and that's where I feel like the friendship thing, like, that's, that goes beyond the looks and stuff like that. That's why you need to be a friend first, you know I mean? Mm -hmm. You need to be friends because... I enjoy just sitting on the couch talking to my wife, watching movies. I, I can be, I'm happy. You know what I mean? I don't have to be like every moment she has to look. And every moment, you know, we, we were supposed to be having passionate sex mm -hmm. everywhere all the time. You know Not what I mean? Not there's anything that, wrong with that. No, right. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, I think you, that's where the friendship comes so in. Basically, well, I mean, me, so wait a minute. So basically the, the foundation of every relationship sh uh, should be friendship. Yes. Or well, you just heard, you're, you're, to it's, it's knowledge a, that it's not going to yeah. be perfect and you have to be willing to work through. Yeah. Listen, we'll pick this up right <laughs> after this commercial break. It's starting to get heated up in here. Tune in in just a couple minutes after this break.